I'm Lisa Schumann. I'm the Director of Mental Health Services at Reproductive Medicine Associates of Connecticut, and I want to welcome you back for Lunch with Lisa's. This is a great series that Lisa Rosenthal and I have started. We're here to help you try to make your journey easier. I'm Lisa Rosenthal, the other half of mm -hmm. the Lisa's, a uh, patient advocate for RMACT. And we are here with Lunch with Lisa's because there are two of us and we've known each other a long time and we're good friends. So Lisa, yeah. why don't you start us off? So, you know, I thought we were going to come here and talk about how to use August effectively, but I just wanted to mention something first that I came across that was so interesting. There's a researcher named Dan Bueller who does a lot of research on happiness. And, you know, you and I are always talking about ways to help yourself feel happier and more satisfied with your life. And he takes a different angle. He's a researcher with National Geographic, has been published quite a bit, and he talks about how your environment really changes how you feel about yourself. And it's fascinating because it really is not the way that we usually look at things. We look at things from a positive psychology standpoint typically or a mind-body perspective. And this really talks about how your environment can change how you feel. So I want to ask you a question. So basically if we're in Hawaii on the beach with a Mai Tai, we're feeling happier? Happy, yes. We're okay. happier. All right. Yes, in fact. So you mean, you really mean physical environment? Physical environment. Okay. And his research shows how if you move, you can feel happier based upon where you live. Now, of course, everybody can't move. So the question is then what do you do if you can't pick up and just move to a different town? And he said three things are really important and it all has to do with face-to-face -face relationships and also security. So one is being able to have three to five friends that you can really depend on, people who if you call, they really care how you're feeling. Number two is having some financial security, and that's not quite as fun as buying a pair of fun shoes, I know, but those things are fleeting. Buying the fun shoes can be fleeting, and putting some money away can be long-lasting and make you feel good. And number three, he said, it's not just your job that makes you happy, how much you get paid or how satisfied you are, but if you have friends at work, which I was so happy to hear because it reinforces how we feel, right? Being able to have friends at work makes you feel so great. So he suggests that when you're at work, if you can make some plans to build a happy hour into it, or maybe mm. the, the mocktails, build a happy hour into you know, your summer, or go out with some friends for lunch, or arrange a breakfast before work, or work out with some friends after work, the, those things can be really helpful in terms of lifting your spirits. I love it. And it's interesting here at, at Reproductive Medicine Associates of Connecticut, we do that actually on a regular basis, where we have happy hours or dinners, or we get together, our lunchroom is enormous and can actually hold our entire staff, and it's really wonderful. Last week I got to see, you know, our doctors hanging out. They like each other. They were laughing. They were having fun. And I was thinking as you were speaking, Lisa, you know, when you're dealing with infertility, being happy it can be really challenging, right? But I love these suggestions because it's not necessarily becoming <gasps> ecstatically happy, but just happier, right? Mm -hmm. Just uh, some improvement. Right. So having three to five friends that you can speak to about infertility or anything else, identifying who they are and knowing that those are the people you can count on, those are the people you tell the truth to. Mm -hmm. I have a secret hidden Facebook page called People I Tell the Truth To. Really? And yes, I do. And there I outed myself. Yeah. And then financial security, there is a different kind of satisfaction about watching your either your 401k grow or your savings account grow. There is a satisfaction and of course when it comes to infertility, lots of people sometimes have to save for a fertility treatment cycle or medications or any of that. And so there, there really is a, a great justification on giving up the cute shoes that, you know, will fall apart after one season anyway. Right. And then professional friends. You know, it, it's, it really is a wonderful thing to be able to come into your office. And the person behind the camera is mm -hmm. also a friend. Mm -hmm. But having a real relationship, knowing, you know, your children's names, knowing what kind of vacations you like, um, you know, having somebody that you really truly feel connected to at work makes coming to work so much more pleasant. So I love the ideas. Laying the groundwork is our hashtag and our theme, more importantly, our theme for August for Ready, Set, Go, which will be September. So getting these things into place, having these happiness boosters so that when you're in treatment, you're kind of already a lot more stable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also feeling like you have 
some control over what you do with your life can be so gratifying, right? This process, as we know, makes people feel so out of control, right? And oh, so yes. frustrating. Absolutely. And, you know, focusing on treatment is, I often say, it's like watching grass grow. It can just make you crazy. And so being able to focus on things that you do have some control over, like even if it's just saying, okay, I'm taking $5.00 and I'm going to put it in the bank tomorrow. Even if it's not a lot of money, just the act of doing something mm -hmm. that's going to make you feel better later can really feel satisfying. And also, I think, balances out that sort of out-of-control feeling. It makes you feel like you have a little bit more equilibrium. And I, I like that you brought balance into it because, like, for me, I do save money that way. I rarely go to Starbucks, and I take the money I would spend at Starbucks, and I put it into a savings jar. I have a jar. I'm old-fashioned. That's good. And, but having balance, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there might be those days where, really, the Starbucks is more important than the money in the jar, right? Mm -hmm. have, and just deciding, yes. you know, do you need some short-term happiness booster, or can you go for the thing that's more long-lasting and that it may be really more productive. Yeah, and those decisions are hard ones. As you said, when you feel strapped financially and emotionally, it's hard, right? You feel deprived and it's deprived, hard, right? Yeah. It's hard to not say, okay, well, I'm just gonna buy the shoes tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But feeling like, okay, I'm going to do something for myself that's gonna help me long-term can also be very beneficial. Even if it doesn't feel that way in the moment, long-term it can be a lot more beneficial. And I think I'm going to step out on a limb here, and I'm interested in what you have to say about this. I think, too, when you sort of see some of these things as taking positive steps towards that baby that you're dreaming of, mm -hmm. that you're trying so hard to make, that putting that money away, and maybe even daring to visualize what their nursery might look like, what kind of things you might want for their room, that might be more important than a pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think that's a good idea, or do you think that's hard for people when they're in the midst of fertility treatment mm -hmm. cycles? Well, I think, you know, thinking about what you want your future to look like, no matter what, is, is nice to put money away for. So you can do both if you feel that you can do that and think about the nursery and put money away towards a crib and that makes you feel good, great. If it's too scary, then you can say, okay, here's my money for a vacation in the future mm -hmm. or towards my retirement or because I'm going to a wedding next year, I want to save up for that special dress or whatever it is. You can do both. So again, you know, laying the groundwork for fertility treatment, but more importantly, really laying the groundwork for having a healthy, satisfying life, no matter what situation you're in. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Great it's idea. A nice, it's a nice way to spend the rest of the summer, taking yes. care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you again in September. We'll see you then. Thank you.